By the end of this video, you will be able to scrape every website you want into ready to use LLM data in just a matter of seconds. So the website that we are going to use is called Firecrawl and Firecrawl will basically allow you to scrape every website you want into ready to use LLM data. And Firecrawl is also open source. So that is also very nice because then you can run it locally on your computer and then it will be free. But if you do not want to do that, then here is the pricing plan. Uh, you can use Firecrawl for free and then you will get 500 credits every month. So when you create your Firecrawl account, you will get sent to this page and this is called the playground. And in the playground, you will have the option to scrape crawl, map, and search. Scraping is where you're going to extract all of the data from a single page. So then you will enter the URL in here and then you can extract all of the data from that URL. But if you, for example, want to scrape a whole website, then you can use the crawl function. And in the crawl function, you can enter the URL of the website and then you will be able to scrape all of the data from that whole website. So not only from one page, but from all the pages they have. Then you have map. A uh, map is basically going to list all of the links and URLs from the base URL that you have entered in here. And then you have the search option. And the search option is basically going to give you all of the scraped data from your search term that you have entered in here. And then you also have the extract function. And you can find this by pressing on extract, then on extract playground. And here you can enter a URL from a website with a prompt. So then you could, for example, say, scrape all of the data from the about us page with the services that this website offers. And then if you, for example, have an email system, then you can use this data to make your emails more personalized. So in this video, I will show you how you can use the extract function because this will be the most useful function if you want to scrape data from every website you want. Okay, so I'm on this website that is called Jokes of the Day. And on this website, there are all kinds of jokes. As we can see, we have the short jokes, policeman jokes, and all kinds of other jokes. But normally when you want to scrape a page like this, then you have to copy the URL. Then in NNN you would have created the HTTP node. And then in the HTTP node, you would have entered the URL that you've just copied behind here. And you would have execute step. Okay, but then you will get a whole HTML text with all of this HTML data. That is basically not readable. And it is also not nice if you send this to your LLM because this will also cost you more tokens. But in Firecrawl, this is not the case because in the playground on the function scrape, you can enter your URL, then you can press on run, and then here you will get all of the data from that page that you wanted to scrape. So here it is saying scraping the URL, and then it will give us all of the text from the page that we wanted to scrape. So here we get all of the jokes, and there is no HTML included. But then if we look at the total pages scraped, we can see that we have only scraped one page. And this is because we have selected the function scrape. But if you wanted to scrape all of the data from the whole page, then we have to use the crawl. So then you can enter your URL again of the website and then you can press on run. So the crawler is finished and we can also see this because the total page is scraped is now 11 instead of 1. So now this allowed us to scrape all of the data from the jokesoftheday.net website. So with the crawler, we got all of the pages and all of the data. But as we can also see, there is a lot of tokens and a lot of data that we have gotten returned. And if you want to immediately put this and send this to our LLM, then it will probably struggle and it is also not cost effective because there is just a lot of tokens and it will cost us a lot of money. So with the extract function, you'll be able to specify the data that you want to get scraped, which is cost effective and it is much quicker than when you would have scraped the whole website. Okay, so we could, for example, say, give me all of the jokes from this website with the author. Okay, so here we have, give me all of the jokes from this website with the author. And then we gave it the website. So then we can generate the parameters. And then the parameters are automatically set. So here we have the array of an object where text is a string and then the author is a string. And here we have the system prompt that we have added. So then we can run the extract function. And now it's going to crawl the jokes of the day website. And it's going to find all of the jokes with the author. So the extraction was finished. And here we can see that we have gotten 206 jokes back. And we got here the text. So this is going to be the joke. And then here you have the author and this is going to be the author. So with the extract function, we were able to scrape the whole website from the jokes of the day, but then only got the jokes and the author back instead of all of the pages from their whole website. Okay, so now we were able to do this in Firecrawl, but we obviously want to do this in NNN and we do not want to enter all of the URLs manually every time. And we want to be this automated with, for example, 30 URLs. So I will now show you how you can set this up in NNN. So let's go to NNN. Okay, so in NNN, the first thing that you will do is press on add first step. So we'll press on the plus, then we'll enter HTTP, and then you will add the HTTP request. Then we'll give this a name. So this will be extract data. 
and then we have to enter all of these input fields. And we can easily do this by getting the curl and using this curl to fill in this HTTP node. So let's go to Firecrawl and get the curl. So the curl will be standing in a documentation of Firecrawl. So in the top right corner, here we see docs. So we will press on this. They will get sent to the quick start page. And then we have to scroll a bit down on the left side where we will see the agentic features. And here we will press on extract. So on the extract page, Firecrawl has the tab using. And here we can see you can extract structured data from one or multiple URLs, including wildcards. Then we have the single page and the multiple page slash full domain. And under there we have the text, when you use asterisk, Firecrawl will automatically crawl and parse all URLs it can discover in that domain. Then extract the requested data. Okay, so it basically says here, if we're going to use the asterisk, then we're going to scrape all of the pages from the URL. And if we do not use the asterisk, then it's just going to scrape that single page. And then also on the extract page, if we scroll all the way down, then we will see an example structure. So here we have the example curl and we can copy this curl and then we can use this to enter all of the input fields in our HTTP request. So here we will copy it and then we'll go back to NNN. So once you're back in NNN, you can press on import curl, and then you can copy paste it in here and then you can press on import. Okay, so now all of the fields are set up. So we have the method on post, the URL is going to be this URL, and then we have turned on the send headers. And in the send headers, we have the name authorization, and then we have the value bearer your API key. And we have to enter our API key in here if we want to be able to send a request to Firecrawl. So we go back to Firecrawl. So once you're in Firecrawl, you can go to the left side to API keys. And here you can create your new API key. And then you can copy it. And then we can go back to NNN. Okay, so in NNN, we will delete everything behind bearer and make sure that you leave the space behind the bearer. And then you can enter your API key. And then your header is set up. So I've also turned on the body with the JSON that we will send to Firecrawl. So in this JSON, we have to change some stuff. So we'll switch it to expression, then we will open it up and here we see the URLs. And here we have the URL HTTPS example-forum.com. And this is not the URL of our website that we want to scrape. So we'll delete everything between the two brackets, delete it, and then we will go to Firecrawl to copy our URL. So in Firecrawl, we have a URL here, so we're going to copy this and then we can go back to N8N and then we can paste it between the two brackets. Okay, and now everything is set up for the URL. Here we have the prompt and this prompt is now extract all user comments from this forum thread. And this is not the prompt for our request. So we have to go back to Firecrawl and copy our prompt so we can enter it in these two brackets. Okay, so in Firecrawl on the right side, we see our prompt so we can just copy this and then we can go back to NNN. So in NNN, we have to delete everything between these two brackets and then we can enter our prompt in there. Okay, and then the prompt is also set up for this JSON body request. And the last thing that we have to change is the schema because now we're going to send this schema to Firecrawl and that is not what we want. So we can go to Firecrawl and then in Firecrawl, we can see our schema here with all of the data and the array of objects. And then on the right side, we see JSON view. So we can switch this on. And then here we have our schema body that we can copy. So we can copy this and then you can go back to NNN. And what you will then do is delete everything behind the schema. So from this bracket, you will delete everything and then you will paste yours in there. And now the format of our JSON body is not correct. So what we will do is copy this whole body and then we will go to OpenAI. So in ChatGPT, we will say, can you make this JSON correct? So we can send this data. And now it's going to list the whole JSON body because here it was not on the right format. So now it has pushed everything one step further. We can copy this, then we can go to NNN and then in NNN we can delete this script and then we can paste the new one in there. Now the HTTP node is set up. So now we can execute the step and here we can see that we have gotten an ID back. So the next step will be pulling the ID back so we can see all of the data that we have scraped. So what we will do is enter an HTTP node and then in the HTTP node, we will also have to import a curl. So we can go back to the Firecrawl documentation. Okay, and in the Firecrawl documentation, you will go to asynchronous extraction and status checking. So we will press on this. And then here we will see the curl that we need. So we'll copy this curl and then we'll go back to NNN. So in NNN, we can press on import curl. Then we can paste the new curl in there. Then we can press on import and then the HTTP node is set up. But there is one thing that we have to add because we have to add the ID 
behind this endpoint because if we look in the documentation of firecrawl then it says that we need an id and this is going to be the id that we have just extracted with the other http node so let's go to nnn and add that id okay so in nnn we will switch the url to an expression then you will enter a slash and then you will open the brackets then here we're going to add the extract data then we're going to add a dot item dot json dot id and this is going to make sure that we are now putting the id from this http node in here so for this request we will also have to turn on the headers so we'll turn on send headers then here we have the name and the value and these are going to be the exact name and value as with the other http node so we'll go to that http node and to the headers they will copy the authorization go to this http node enter it in here and then the same as for the value so i will copy this and then you will paste it in the other http node so in the value in here the http node is now set up so we can press on execute step and here we can see that the status is still on processing so what we'll now have to do is called pulling and pulling is basically where we're going to look if the request that we have sent is ready or not and in this case the request is not ready because it is still on processing to add this polling we have to add an if node so we will press on the plus then we will enter if and in this if node we're going to look if the data is empty or not so we're going to drag the data that is in an array in this value one and then we're going to put this is equal on an array because it is array data on is not empty because if it is not empty then we want it to go true and if it is empty then it want to be false so in the if node there's one very important thing that we have to change so in the settings we have to change the on error instead of stop workflow to continue using error outputs because the http request when it does work will be sent in an object instead of an array and now the if node is sent on a json of data in an array and then it will give an error because then if the data is ready everything will get sent in an object to this if node and because it can only accept the array it won't work and that's why we have to change the settings to continue using error outputs so now we're going to add a wait node and this wait node is basically going to wait for a certain amount of time before it will move on to the next node so we'll press on the plus then we'll type in wait and here the wait amount is now set on 5 but we need to change this to 10 because then it will wait for 10 seconds and then we can drag this plus behind the http request so after 10 seconds it will try and make the request again and then in this request it is going to look if our data from the scraped website is ready okay so now we can run the whole workflow again and then we can see how it works so now we can execute the workflow and here we're going to see that it's going to extract the data fetch and try to get the request then it's going to wait for a couple of seconds because the request was not ready yet and then after a couple of seconds it will try again to make the request and check if the data is ready okay the workflow is finished and if you now take a look in the http request we can see that we have gotten all of the jokes back. If you want to use this workflow for free, then you can join our free school community and then you can press on the classrooms and then in the edit and workflow vault, all of the workflows from all of our videos will be standing in here and also this firecrawl workflow. If you learned something from this video, then leave a like and subscribe. And if you have a question, then leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.